So in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to build a query using the SQL view. So this is a personal geodatabase. I know this because of the extension .mdb, which means this is an MS Access database, even though it was created from within our catalog, which is how you create a geodatabase. You cannot create a geodatabase from within MS Access. So if I double click, it will automatically, because I'm opening, the, opening this from within the Windows view, it will automatically open from within the MS Access software. If I wanted to see it from within the GIS, I would actually have to open up our catalog and view it from within our catalog. So uh, you can set up a different filter for how you see the various objects that you can have in a, in a database, an MS Access database. In this case, it's the all access objects. So in other words, I'm going to see every object type, um, which means I'm going to see tables, queries, forms, and reports. I could further filter uh, by created date or modified date. It's just up to you. If you're just working on queries, you could just uh, filter it by queries. So you'll see the different headers. In this case, I only have tables in this database. So I'm, I only have one group being displayed. So these are all tables. When you see this, this kind of the underscore shape underscore index or um, with that suffix or uh, file names with the GDB underscore prefix, those are all related to the structural um, description the schema of the geodatabase. Typically you're not going to be looking at these from within MS Access. You can and you can edit them but you really want to make sure you know what you're editing because you could impact that structure so that you couldn't access your data anymore. Um, so it's it would be very easy to corrupt your file if you started editing in here without really knowing what you're editing. Generally you're going to be editing these from within our catalog or arc map. The other tables, these are just normal field data, right? So in other words, if I open up AZ Geocodes, I have these fields and then these values for those fields. So these are the descriptive tables that go with the feature class. So if you go, um, you know, you have an AZ um, geocodes probably somewhere in here you should oh no this is just a table sorry az geocodes is just a, a, a sort of a uh, lookup table for geography or geology codes however az towns you can see it has a shape index which tells you automatically that that is a feature class in other words this has spatial data this az geocodes does not have spatial data the AZ Towns represents the non-spatial data. If I clicked it open, it's just the fields and their values. Whereas the AZ Towns Shape Index represents the geometry associated with the AZ Towns. So again, this demo is really focusing on creating a, a query from within the SQL view. I, I encourage you to use the SQL view, and well, for my students, I require you to use the SQL view because you really need to understand how that how to create a true expression SQL expression so the way you're going to create a SQL expression in SQL view is you're going to go to create and then you're going to go to query design now this is the GUI version um, I really haven't explored you'll see I, I get back to the SQL view once I've created a, a query kind of in a clunky way because I just haven't taken the time to figure out a smoother way but I'm not going to work with this I'm not going to work from within the GUI because it hides a lot of structural information that I want to know and you should want to know this so I'm going to close this out and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select SQL view now I'm actually looking at the expression I typically kind of you know close up and I'm just going to write the expression um, using SQL. So uh, let's say that I'm going to, if I go into, um, if I minimize this, 
and you'll see <laughs> I want to get ultimately get back to run so uh, but I'm going to open up this table and I'm going to look and see I want to look at population right that's my my field name and name so that's what I'm going to pull from AZ towns so I can keep that it's just saying do you want to keep that population width um, for the population field so notice I don't see the uh, the run tool anymore so if I go over here to create right I still don't see it and I want that run I want to make sure I see that run because that's how I'm going to run the query so a really clunky way to get back there which I'll probably figure out I can go ahead and go back to that original view and uh, delete that there's my run I'm going to need that because I'm going to hit select and remember I said I want the name field and I want the population field and I want it from AZ towns. So your structure here, right? Um, as we dis as we discussed in class, your structure is select field name, field name. Remember when I use the uh, carrots, it's a placeholder from table name. That is your basic SQL structure. And in in uh, MS Access, you need the semicolon. So again, so select field name field name and from table name so we're not getting into a where clause or anything like that we're just talking about the basic selection or select structure so again I want to let I'm going to test it first before I save it I want to make sure it works because you know syntax may be off I may have you know sometimes you'll you'll type so quick that you won't type the full table name so when you try to run it you get an error it's like I can't find if you you know it, it's looking for a table named a towns so of course I go back and I fix that oops not as easy town so now let's try running it and it these are the results this is the result and you, um, you can certainly pipe this to a or send it to a table itself where you would have a another table that would represent just the name and the population of towns so I'm happy with the results. This is what I wanted, the name and the population. There is no where clause, so it should be the same exact number of rows that the AZ Towns, the original table, has. So I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and close it out. If I close it, it's going to prompt me to save it. So it asked me, do you want to save it? Yes. And in this way, I'm prompted to even rename it, which I encourage you to always name, give your uh, queries a meaningful name. So for me, I'm just going to say select, right, from um, name, pop, from AZ Towns. So that tells me what this query does. You can certainly abbreviate some of this, um, you know, or you could just say, you know, if some fields or what have you. If I click OK, it's going to save it. If I scroll down, I've got a queries section now, right? Remember, it's an all access objects can be viewed. I now have a que uh, one query that I've created and it's listed under the queries section. If I open it up, it's going to, if I just double click it, it's going to run it again. I'll get the output. If I right click and hit design view, it'll take me into the GUI. But if I go to SQL view, that's the view I always want to work in. So um, if you, uh, so let's, if you edit this, you can say, well, I'm just going to say, uh, just give me everything, right? Just give me all. And if I hit run, there's all the fields, right? So I've basically duplicated the table. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to go back because I've already got that table. Why would I want to duplicate it? Unless I had a where clause in here, that would be reason to do it all. So again, I'm going to take it back to name, population, and go ahead and close it out. I'm happy with it. Just to make sure, because I've just uh, changed this, I may have made a mistake, so let's run it again just to make sure it runs okay. I'm going to save it. And there it is. So in this demonstration, I've shown you how to use the SQL view in order to create a query for a geodatabase. Thank you.